Welcome to Heart and Health, where nurturing and caring is our mission. Heart and Health is a multi-specialty care facility in family medicine and cardiology, specializing in latest technologies in detection of early stage of diabetes and heart disease in two locations in the heart of Long Island, Babylon, and Middle Island. Heart and Health is clinically affiliated with Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. Join host Larry Micarenda and Dr. David Cavastine as they talk about Lyme disease and how it affects our health and the community. Hi, I'm Larry Micarenda and welcome to Heart and Health. One of the things that has happened during the past winter, besides it being really warm and everybody having lower home heating costs, is the problem with the insect population, specifically ticks. And ticks carry Lyme disease. And that's why this program. We're with Dr. David Cavastine from Heart and Health. He's a cardiologist, as well as having a multitude of other talents that you perform medically. Uh, one of the things we like to really concentrate on in this half of the program is talking about Lyme disease. First of all, for people who may not know, what is Lyme disease? Lyme disease is uh, an infection. It's an infection that is caused uh, by the bacteria, um, Borrelia burgdorferi. Uh, this is a specific bacteria, uh, part of the family of the bacteria called Aspirachis. Um, very specific and very um, unusual. Uh, Lyme disease was discovered by CDC in, uh, believe it or not, the, the town of uh, Lyme in Connecticut in 1975. And the way that it was discovered was uh, um, it was it, it was discovered or uh, it was uh, um, became apparent that there were a lot of unusual cases of juvenile arthritis in a young population. And CDC um, got kind of curious, said, well, why out of a sudden we have such a uh, high incidence of juvenile, juvenile arthritis in uh, this town? So they started uh, doing the investigations and they realized that um, it, the, the disease was uh, infection, infection that caused by the bacteria which is carried by tech. Um, Notoriously in Northeast, these are like a uh, black legged tick uh, or deer tick. Um, and after the diagnosis of uh, that the specific disease, they called that infection Lyme disease. Um, it is basically similar to, uh, similar to malaria or any other type of infections. Bacteria is being carried uh, from one host to another host by uh, a vector, which uh, either in malaria is, is mosquito and in Lyme disease is tick. Um, tick is basically a host. It's not anything about the tick itself that causes the problem. It's the infection, so the bacteria that live um, in, in tick and the infection that it causes from the bite that uh, produces uh, and become uh, Lyme disease. Now, uh, for, for the ones who, who may not know, what are some of these symptoms of Lyme disease? Um, you know what? The, the symptoms of the Lyme disease is very similar to the symptoms of any type of infection. Um, when you get infected by bacteria, you, you develop uh, malaise, fatigue, weakness, memory lost, and uh, it's acute infections as you were getting infected with any type of bacteria. Uh, however, in case of Lyme disease, the infection has three different stages. First stage, which is uh, the earliest stage, uh, happens right after the tick bite, when the body gets introduced with, um, with, with the bacteria. And the bacteria causes a cascade of event. Your, you know, our body are, are programmed to fight the infections. And the way they do it is by producing, um, by producing uh, autoimmune defense system to kill the bacteria. And as a result, uh, your body feels fatigue, you get muscle, muscle pain, you can have neurologic headache, uh, neurologic symptoms like headache, um, you get sensitive to light, um, you feel tired, your memory loss, you just don't want to do anything. Um, and uh, it's, it's a very, uh, it's the symptoms of the acute case or acute phase of Lyme disease. Um, the infection of the Lyme disease, or Lyme disease itself, breaks down is in three different stages. The first stage, which is right after um, tick bite, um, you're going to see the small, uh, uh, small rash, at which, uh, which just slowly expand. Uh, we call it erythema nodosum, which is basically means, uh, or in the lame term, we, we call it uh, bullseye kind of an infection. is a is a is a significant type of a red rash that it becomes bigger and bigger. Uh, subsequent to that, this, uh, you know, the bacteria itself 
uh, in the body multiplies and infects the rest of the organs. It could affect the brain, it could affect the heart, and infect joints. The second stage of uh, Lyme disease is uh, um, it, it can affect, uh, which could happen between months or uh, years after. It's joint pain, heart, you know, um, um, arthritis, which we call Lyme arthritis. It could affect the heart, cause palpitations, heart block, and um, uh, cardiomyopathy. Um, and it could, uh, in the last stage of the disease, which is years after, it could affect the nerve system and cause memory loss, uh, cause um, multiple neurologic deficits, which the symptoms are very similar to the other causes or other neurologic causes, such as multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, or fibromyalgia. Some people have even described um the symptoms is almost as if a stroke had came on because of the loss of speech, the shaking, the nervousness. Is that possible too? Of course. The bacteria itself affects all the organs in the body and it disseminated through the blood streams and goes to the tissue. Um, I actually um, did a f um, extensive research and I have a, a very good web page, uh, website, uh, liheartandhealth.com and it has uh, a few videos and all the information about how it gets disseminated and how it affects the body. But the bacteria itself goes through the tissues and goes through the blood and affects everything in the body and all the organs. However, the major organs that gets we notice is nervous system, uh, which is your brain, um, Bell's palsy. They could have uh, uh, signs and symptoms of possible stroke or neurologic deficits. Uh, it could affect the heart that can cause palpitations or heart problems. Um, or it could affect uh, the autoimmune response uh, of Lyme disease, could affect the joints and develop joint arthritis. And that was, uh, that was the first thing that was discovered in, time of, uh, in, a, in the town of Lyme in Connecticut, uh, where they saw uh, very young people de developing arthritis and they wanted to know why. And that was the autoimmune response to Lyme disease itself. And Dr. Gavistine, now just for the audience to know um, that Lyme disease, how it's contracted, it's not through personal touching, sneezing, breathing, it's through one way only. Uh, how is it contracted? Uh, very good question. Uh, CDC has done a very extensive research to find out the cause and how this has been disseminated through the um, the population. Um, the best way I can um, I can bring an example for the viewers is is comparing that with malaria. Malaria is also an infection that gets uh, carried by mosquito. Now Lyme disease is an infection by bacteria and is carried by the tick bite. It does not carry um, from one person to another person. It's not contagious by sneezing or saliva or other casual uh, um, contacts. There have been some um, some papers, some articles talking about possibility of uh, uh, being transmitted through sexual contact uh, or from the mother to fetus during pregnancy. However, there is no uh, solid evidence about that. At this so time. basically, it's inconclusive at this time. What is what is conclusive is is being carried by the tick bite, and the tick bite has to be um, significant. Meaning what? The tick itself has to have the Lyme disease bacteria in it, Borrelia. And if, that back, if the tick has the bacteria, the tick has to be in contact with the person for a long period of time, usually more than 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours. The reason for that is it's not so easy to contact or catch the Lyme disease because you need a specific amount of the bacteria to enter the body to cause the disease itself. So the tick has to be contacted or, or, or uh, feeding uh, on the skin for more than 24 to 48 hours to cause the transmission of the disease. Now, Dr. Kavacine, how would you diagnose uh, Lyme disease? Very good questions. Um, most importantly is uh, we always say that you have to have a tick or a tick bite to diagnose time, uh, Lyme disease, but the truth of the matter is some of the ticks are very, very small and they infect, um, infect people in, in, the, in, in the very earliest stages of their development. So the ticks are so small that sometimes you don't see it. Sometimes the tick is in the hair, sometimes you don't see the rash. That was another, another signs that people look for. Now uh, recently we, having, uh, we have discovered a very specific 
uh, type of a test is a blood test that we look for a specific antigen and antibodies that your body produces for that specific bacteria. Um, the, however, uh, it's very important that there are so many different blood tests to be done. Um, however, there's a specific, uh, very few labs in the United States that they are very specific about diagnosing and finding the antibody that um, diagnoses Lyme disease. All right, so if somebody has come in, we've diagnosed them, they have Lyme disease. Now, what are their treatment options? The treatment options, it, it, you know, this is, this is something that I think most people don't know. Uh, the Lyme disease is something, uh, is, is a disease that can be prevented and can be cured if it's diagnosed right away, meaning what? If there is a clinical suspicion that, the, that the, the person has a tick bite or the person is in the high risk of, of and, and showing the symptoms of the Lyme disease, the very simple antibody or a very simple regimen of antibiotic can kill the bacteria itself. Usually that course is an uh, is, is anti, um, antibiotics that you take by mouth about 21 to 30 days and it kills the, the bacteria itself and the infection goes away. However, if the infection is not treated or goes underdiagnosed, the Lyme disease progresses to the second and third stage. And during that time, the effects and, and, and the sequela of the disease are um, harder to treat because your body starts to fight the bacteria and produces autoimmune response to it. And without having the antibody to kill or without antibiotic to completely eradicate the the, the bacteria itself, you develop some sort of um, uh, autoimmune reaction that lasts for a very long time. Um, stage two and stage th three of Lyme disease, it gets treated with the IV intravenous antibiotic, and it's, it's almost a month uh, treatment. So would people be coming uh, into the office, would it be outpatient care for something like that, or is it strictly hospitalization? For the first stage of um, Lyme disease, it's, uh, it's, it's basically can be done by any primary care doctor um, in any uh, medical facility. Uh, most importantly is to diagnose the disease and know, about, know enough about the disease to, to, to find out what it is uh, and what they're treating and treating it very quickly. If it gets treated very quickly, it can be done in an outpatient setting, it can be done in the clinics. Uh, however, if, um, if it's not diagnosed and is a stage two or stage three when the, the bacteria itself has affected the other organs like heart and brain, then intravenous antibiotic is necessary and initiation of that treatment uh, mostly uh, gets done in the hospital. However, it can be continued at home uh, with the nurse and uh, with the, with the nurse uh, and the other uh, medical uh, uh, staff. So it can be a very serious condition left untreated. And one of the things, what can the people here on Long Island, as as well as uh, you know other areas that that are watching this program, what can they do to prevent Lyme disease? Prevention goes to uh, to the basics. Basically, you want to make sure that. Uh, um, you're not in, you know, when you go hiking or when you go hunting or when you even uh, take your pet for a walk, dog, cat, um, make sure that you are not walking in, you know, in the grass in a high wood area. Uh, always look for tick to see, make sure there's no tick attached to you when you come back from trips or when you go from, come, come back from outdoor. Using any type of repellent for mosquitoes because those uh, repellent are also effective for repelling ticks and, and other insects. So keeping a tick away from your body, that's the first step. Covering your body to make sure the tick doesn't, um, doesn't cause bite, that's another thing, to make sure you're wearing long sleeves, long pants if you're going, if you're going to woods. And uh, lastly is knowing the symptoms. I think a lot, of, um, a lot of people don't know what Lyme disease is, and I think that's one of the mission of heart and health and myself to educate my patients, educate um, um, you know, our, our community about how easy is it to, to, to get the disease. However, at the same time, it's also very easy to treat it if you can treat it very early with early detection and prevention. And you don't have to wait for the second or third stage of the Lyme disease, which is very hard to treat. Unfortunately, we see so many people that they get diagnosed or misdiagnosed with other diseases like fibromyalgia, someone who has chronic pain. <clears throat> they, 
they give them the diagnosis of fibromyalgia and in reality is Lyme disease or someone who has multiple sclerosis or someone who has memory loss or other manifestations of Lyme disease. We are living in a community that Lyme disease is very prevalent and we have to be very mindful of it and we have to be very vigilant and, um, and try to detect it and treat it as quickly as we can. And another problem with Lyme disease is the fact that it's very sneaky and it loves to mimic other diseases. So it really loves to keep people in the medical profession on their toes. Correct, correct. And the, um, the concept behind it is the tick not only carries the Lyme disease bacteria, it also carries other things with it. it that tick is also could be infected with viruses. It could be infected with other fungus or other tick borne diseases, as we call in medical community. And each one of them should be treated differently with a different bacteria, with, with different antibiotic. You know, you can use one antibiotic to treat all this different infection, obviously. Viruses should be treated with different category um, of antibiotic than bacteria, so as fungus. So um, the treatment of the disease should not also, uh, also not, should be specific to the Lyme itself, it should be also towards the co-infections or super infections that might arise. So if, if people in the public who are watching this program would like to know more about it, they can go to your uh, website, heartandhealth.com, okay. which will take them to uh, areas of Lyme disease plus other medical things that they may not know about. And uh, as a service to the public, to educate the public, um, you host that website. Um, one of the other things, uh, that I noticed that earlier today, which uh, Heart and Health does, is uh, another thing that's at epidemic proportions right now, which is diabetes. And we had uh, spoke on other programs about that. Um, I was able to interview one of your diabetic counselors uh, earlier today, and we have some footage of that. And we'll be right back in just a moment after that footage. Thank you. You've been watching Heart and Health. Please feel free to visit our website at heartandhealth.com. Heart and Health where prevention and early detection are the hallmarks of 21st century medical care in the United States. Heart and Health is a multi-specialty care facility in family medicine and cardiology, specializing in latest technologies in detection of early stage of diabetes and heart disease in two locations in the heart of Long Island, Babylon and Middle Island. Heart and Health is clinically affiliated with Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City.